Hey guys, my name's Curtis and I am one half of this channel. The other half of this channel is my beautiful wife, Chelsea. And this is Just The Tip Tuesdays, where we get right to the point on tips on photography and videography. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get perfect skin tones using Premiere Pro and vector scopes. So let's get into it. Okay, so now that we're in Premiere Pro, we have the headshot that you just saw and we're gonna go ahead and color correct this and make sure that our skin tones are on point. So the first thing that we're gonna do is go over here and pull up our Lumici scopes. I always keep them up here. If they're not up here, you can go to window, all the way down to Lumetri scopes and click that, and that should pull this up. If you don't see these scopes here, what you can do is right click and pull up all the different vector scopes available. I always have vector scope YUV, parade RGB, and waveform selected. Um, but today we're only gonna be talking about this vector scope right here. So what this shows you is all the different colors in the frame here represented on this little graph. Basically what you're seeing is all the different colors. The further these colors are stretched out towards the outer edge is how saturated the colors are. You can see as I go to over to Lumetri Color, if I go over here and I start warming it up, you can see that this all shifts over to the warmer side. And if I really cool it down, it all shifts to the warmer or to the cooler side. Go ahead and reset that. Now, since we're talking about skin tones, what you're gonna wanna do is look at this line right here. This right here is actually called the skin tone line. So no matter what shade of color your skin is, everybody's blood is still the same color and that's what shows up on camera. And that's gonna be based on this line here. The only thing that's gonna change on your skin tone is gonna be the saturation. Okay, but now looking at the scope here, you can see that there's a bunch of information that we don't really need. So how would you even tell where your skin tones are with all this big, this huge big blob here? And that's because it's taking out all this information. But all we really want is the skin tone. So first. Thing I'm going to do is go over to the effect control and then go down to opacity and I click this little pen tool here. With this pen tool I'm going to go over to my face and I'm just going to mask in all of my skin. It doesn't have to be perfect just as long as the skin's selected and there's no other dark areas or if you're wearing sunglasses you're going to want to mask those out too because that's going to affect this. So now you can see that everything in the background is masked out except for my skin. So when you go back to your vector scope here you can see that the only information on here is my skin tone. And here you can see that it's pretty good and it's almost on this line here but it's a little on the red side. So what you can do now is go over to Lumetri Color up here. Uh, I'm going to close this and you're going to open up HSL Secondary. Now when I'm here I'm going to select this little picker and I'm going to click on my skin tone. So down here you can see the hue, saturation, and luminance and this is the mask that it's selecting. It's trying to select all the skin tones based on what I just selected there. So what I'm going to do actually is going back to effect controls. I'm going to get rid of this mask just for a second and I'm going to go back to the Lumetri color panel and I'm gonna click this mask here. So this will show you everything that's selected. So you can see that some of my skin is selected, but not all of it. So you can just play around with these and until it selects most of my skin, just like that. I don't need to go that much because that's starting to get into my hair. So I'm gonna bring it down a bit. I can feather it out everywhere just a bit. There's no right or wrong way to do this, just until everything is selected. Um, then what you can do is bring up the denoise just a bit, clean it up, and then you can blur it just a hair. Then I can get rid of this mask, because now I know all of my skin tones are selected. So what I'm gonna do is get rid of this mask, and I can bring this over. You can either just change the temperature of the skin here, which you can make it a little bit warmer, and you can see that it's bringing my saturation of my skin tones back up towards this side here. And you can really see that if you put this mask back on, like so. So we're gonna go here, and then you can see when I start to manipulate it here, you can see how it changes on the scope on this side. So obviously that's really warm and I'm starting to look real orange, so I don't need it that much. So I'm gonna bring it up just a little bit to about, I think about there it looks good. And I could probably bring it just down to the green a little bit, just like that. So it's more on this line here. And now I can get rid of this mask completely. Delete. And right there, that's how you know your skin tones are perfect and on point is by using this little vector scope here. Now if I show you the before and after, that's the before, that's the after. Looks much more pleasing and much more natural. Um, obviously this clip isn't color corrected yet. There's a few little things that I would do. Add some saturation, 
add a little bit of contrast and things like that. So if you guys want to see a little update video on how to color correct in full, you can just leave a comment down below and let me know. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys learned something. I hope that um, this helps you get perfect skin tones in your videos. If you guys want to see more about color grading in Premiere Pro, please leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you want to see. If you guys like this video and found it helpful, please hit that like button. It actually helps us out. And if you want to see more videos like this, please hit that subscribe button so we can see you next week. And I'll see you on the next one.